together hosted a one-of-a-kind informal tete-a-tete between two very close friends who also happen to be two of Asia's most influential women. Vinita Bali, in the Forbes magazine's list of Asia's top 50 power businesswomen and the Economic Times Businesswoman of the Year, in conversation with Padmashri Awardee and Bharat Natyam legend Malvika Sarukai. Well, hi. Um, you know, listening to Vinita now, I've heard her say this often, but every time I hear it, you know, I'm traveling with her through her journey. And compared to this very wide experience in the corporate world and travel and people and new places, I think what the classical arts, when I like kind of look back, it's like saying, how do you tend a field? How do you plow the field? How do you refresh the field again and again? You know, it's so different because the classical arts require that, you know, you work with your inner self, importantly. And, um, you know, that requires a kind of sustained, you know, um, application. And I would never have done it if it wasn't for my mother's um, passion, you know, her faith, her madness for the classical arts. You know, one needed that kind of support because it's a fairly lonely journey. Uh, you practice in isolation, more or less. You create an isolation. And it's only in performance time that you're actually sort of, you know, interacting with a large group of people. And then you go back to your dance studio to rework on yourself. So there's a lot of time spent without conversation, but in a conversation and, you know, having to evolve it. So it's like a very, very different world. You know, there's sometimes when we've had these conversations and she's on flights and she's saying, I'm taking off, I'm landing and she's gone to America and she's met people and she's done her Clinton Global and she's done various other things. And it'll be a whole week of activity. And I would look at my week and say, what have I done? And I've perhaps just gone about three kilometers out of my house, done something and basically stayed in and read and worked. And my musician, musicians come home and I practice. And you know, sometimes even we're amazed when we compare notes because you know, the world is, the worlds are so uh, uh, different and they demand I think different, you know? You know, one of the things we've talked about often because, um, you know, I'm interested in the arts, interested enough to sort of ask questions. And one of the things which was actually quite curious when we had our conversations was, you know, one day I was saying, talking about something and I used the word alignment. And, uh, you know, those of you who come from the corporate world, we keep using this word, you know, are we aligned to our objective and so on. So Malavika stopped me and said, what do you mean by alignment? So I said, you know, alignment meaning, you know, we all share the same goal. We are all marching towards the same thing. So I asked her, I said, why are you so surprised that I use the word alignment? And she said, because that is what we are constantly doing in art. And, you know, then we explored a little further. So we said, okay, so there's teamwork, there is process, there is discipline. And, you know, one of the things I think it would be great if you could talk, because there are a lot of people here, you know, who are sort of creative entrepreneurs. So one of the questions I like asking artists, and certainly somebody like Malavika is, you know, what is the creative process that you undertake? I mean, how do you envision something? And how do you get to a stage from envisioning to actually delivering the kind of performances you do. It's a big one, but... <laughs> yes. Talking about, you know, this <laughs> word of alignment, I almost felt that, you know, something which is so special to the world of classical arts, till I first heard it from you, I felt it was almost hijacked. You know, I said, because it's so meaningful, it's so full of uh, significance, 
because in the classical arts when we mean alignment we mean body mind so again this is an internal practice so we are talking of body mind meditative alignment and then we are talking of alignment with our musicians with our teamwork then we are talking about alignment with space the whole thing of what is this space how does a dancer move in space how does a dancer move with time so alignment started taking on these has very different connotations and it's a very precious word you know and it has a certain um sense of deeper meaning it's not functional it's more you know so i was quite excited and then we found there was she was using innovation and uh, many creativity and many other words and then she introduced me into this whole the whole corporate language on how certain words are used in that context but you know coming to creativity i mean it's such a long process you know it just takes i mean you need inspiration i think you know something to start you off you need a mind which is active you need um you need to be stimulated you need to um you know be excited with your medium others how do you create you know something has to stir within you otherwise creativity doesn't happen and then you need i think the whole deliberate and longer process of putting in all the you know aspects of creativity if i was to choreograph i would need lyric i would need music i would have to sit with myself and say what is um the language of dance how am i going to rework this language i would need practice i would need to envision i would need to have a full concept and then sort of get to making that concept and it's uh, and then having to actually dance it on stage after you've done it about 50 times <laughs> i rehearse a lot um i rehearse a lot so i can get on the stage and let go yeah so i find freedom but it it and then how does one refresh oneself i think that is the big question right i mm. mean how does yeah. one refresh oneself in this something which one has done so often what is that element which keeps the surge mm. you know yeah. i don't know you tell me what happens in business <laughs> well business is you know i think there's a lot frankly through conversations with either artists or people who come from sports at least i always find a lot of inspiration in business from outside business because i think the sheer dedication you know when you watch the olympics and you say oh wow these people are doing it you know not for the 2 million dollars that they will get at the end of it all but just the pleasure or the you know the joy of running the joy of uh, uh, you know playing tennis or whatever it is and i've often wondered you know what keeps artists and sports people sports people as in the olympic sports people not the the others who actually make a lot of money on ipl uh, those are not very exciting for me personally but you know this quest for excellence again is something that we've talked about which is what is excellence because i do believe that the corporate world can learn a lot from people who pursue excellence for the sake of excellence and you know we've talked about this often with malavika certainly and i've discussed it with you know a lot of other people who come from fields outside of the corporate world and you know one of the things we've said is excellence is a quality of the mind and just to give you an idea uh, you know malavika performed yesterday at chaudhaya people like vandana and several of us from lsr were involved so what happens is we go and see a concert that begins at 7 o'clock and ends at 8:30 what we don't see is the months of r&d that have gone into creating that concert and on the day of the concert you know malavika is there at 8 in the morning 
discussing light and technical with you know the the technical and the light person then they balance sound then they look at all kinds of things and you know the whole day is actually spent on getting ready for the 90 minutes and i often feel that you know when you look at the tennis greats they are practicing and practicing and practicing you know for a match that you know takes a few hours at best but it is that that constant striving for something um you know which keeps artists and sports people and anybody who excels doing what they are doing which frankly we in the corporate world i don't think do enough of so my question again is you know talk a little bit about excellence what does it mean and as you interact with other people you know what is it that you would say to some of the people sitting here who are going to venture into you know something new and become entrepreneurs in their own right i mean how should they think of excellence um you know i think for dance dancers who are practicing anything to do with the classical arts i often say dance for dance you know let that be your goal let that be your target because i think and something else which is which is which differentiates is that in the classical arts excellence is in the sense you come to a concert and then there are there is adulation or there is people people who say oh, we have never seen anything like that but that's it you're not seeded and i think there it makes it much more difficult because you're not paid no more money for excellence i could have danced yesterday at 70% why did i push to 100% i'm not getting paid more i'm going to get the same kind of adulation i'm going to have people say wonderful and i i would have done fa a fairly fairly good concert but to seek or to soar for that extra 30% that extra something which is not in the sense you're not what i'm saying is in the classical arts there is no monetary benefit of excellence in tennis you play well you get more money you're seeded so what happens in the arts why do artists dream why do you tell us you tell us i don't know i think we're just mad we just love the medium so much that you know we want to travel to those moments that you know we can't experience in the world around us so there is a sense of transcendence it might sound a big word but there it is there is something to the classical arts and i'm saying unless there's something like that which keeps you soaring we won't have excellence because it isn't about money gained there is no direct result for excellence in the arts the audience doesn't really know whether i've done 70 or 95 they really don't there's no nothing to gauge it there's only ourselves and our conscience you know so it's um i don't know i think we just have to be so passionate about it Yeah you know one of the other questions and maybe after this we'll just throw it open to you know people to ask questions because you know we're not uh, you know one of the things that I've often wondered is we talk about in business we talk about entrepreneurs and we say you know if you want to become an entrepreneur you should be willing to take risk and again you know one of some days when you think about it you say that you know artists are entrepreneurs because they take a huge risk they don't know when the next concert is going to be they don't know if there is going to be a next concert what you're going to get paid for you know what is going to happen you just make a decision and you say my life is going to be that of a musician or a dancer or an instrument player or whatever and then you just then you just wait for stuff to happen you know it's not unlike any of us sitting here wanting to start something new you have a dream you have a passion but you have no guarantee that there is someone willing to actually monetize your dream or your passion and you know if you face reality unless you are born into wealth we all have to do something for a living so i think artists take huge risks 
So, how have you thought about, you know, entrepreneurship and the risks you might want to take and, um, you know, what does it make you feel? What does it, how does it feel to not know, um, you know, when your next concert is going to be and how many concerts you're going to do in this year and... Actually, this whole th word, you know, this entrepreneur, risk-taking, I sort of found out about that after I met you. Okay. Till then, I never thought I was an entrepreneur. I just said, I'm an artist. Then when she said all this, I said, oh, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. You know, I've been doing this all my life. And um, I don't know. I think it's just, you know, I had a very supportive mother. She was like a pillar. She was my everything. And she dreamt and we both dreamed together. That was a huge, not a help. That was, that was what changed my life. I think that was a great partnership. Yeah, huge Because she wasn't just a mother. I mean, she was your researcher, your critique, your, uh, you know, co-traveler. Because I think, you know, artists, we risk every year, every month. Every day is a risk. And every time an artist has to renegotiate their fees, which is also very, very difficult. You represent yourself and you have to renegotiate every time with every person with every organizer. And sometimes, you know, that aspect of it can be extremely demoralizing. You know, it just puts you down. And then, then you've got to go into your dance studio and dance. And then fill up with some exuberance, some abundance, something else. Because, you know, it's also the world we live in. I don't know how much the classical arts are valued for what they bring in. They are intangible enrichment. We are only used to tangible stuff. We can either put on the wall or take home or possess. We don't acknowledge that intangible enrichment is what makes us better human beings. That's what art does. But we don't have enough people talking about it or recognizing it or supporting it, you know? So we have to sort of, like Chakura birds, you know, <laughs> the birds, the, these are mythical birds which live on moonbeams. They live on the, you know, drinking drops of moonbeams. Uh, we have to live on those, you know, inspirational moments in our life. And say, we've got to keep going, you know, we've got to complete the marathon, which is what I'm trying to do. <laughs> and doing very well.